Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about how to isolate plant pathogenic fungi from diseased leaf. Why do you need to isolate? Why do you need to separate the pathogenic fungi from the diseased leaf? One can easily depend on the symptoms produced by a fungus on the plant, maybe on the leaf or stem or root and identify the fungus or pathogen responsible for the disease. However, the pathogen needs to be isolated from the plant and cultured from diseased specimen and this is required for proper identification and also preservation of the fungus. Proper identification means here the fungus that will be isolated from the leaf can be morphologically studied, its physiology, its biochemistry, its genetics and its molecular variation compared to other pathogens can be studied and we can preserve the fungus for future reference. So these are the reasons why we need isolation of fungus from uh, disease leaf and these are also the reasons to isolate any other pathogen from a diseased leaf. So here we should know that only saprophytic pathogens can be cultured in the lab. Saprophyte means those which can be grown in the lab, those which depend on organic material, dead organic material for their survival. They don't need living host for their survival. So here in this picture we see in the left hand side there is a powdery mildew disease. Powdery mildew pathogen is obligate parasite. They cannot be cultured in the lab. So there is no question of isolation of those obligate pathogens uh, like powdery mildew, rust, downy mildew and all that. However, in the right hand side we find uh, alternative blight of mustard and this is well known disease. Uh, it can be identified through its typical symptom produced on the leaf. So it is alternative blight. But this alternative pathogen can be isolated in the lab. And in this uh, lecture, we'll see how this pathogen can be isolated. So method one. So in general, for fungi sporulating on the leaf surface, uh, direct transfer can be done to the growth medium. How we'll do that? Touch the spores on the leaf surface with a sterile inoculation needle and inoculate the medium in the lab or you can stab the sterile inoculation needle into the growth medium so that some amount of medium uh, gets attached to the needle and it becomes wet as a result if the wet needle is touched on the spores the spores will come easily on the medium on the inoculation needle. After touching the spores, streak the inoculation needle onto a plate or slant. So you will get your spores transferred to the medium directly. The second method is for those plant pathogenic fungi which do not sporulate readily on the leaf surface where the sporulation is not found naturally, we can induce sporulation by keeping the specimen, disease specimen in the moist chamber. How do we make moist chamber? Take one sterile petri dish. Place the sterile filter paper in it and moisten it with sterile water. So the filter paper can be moistened without uh, keeping any free flowing water in it. So the filter paper remains only moistened and just wet. Then the disease specimen can be kept on the moist filter paper and covered with a petri dish lid. Then you can keep the moist chamber on laboratory bench and monitor the filter paper whether it is getting dried or not or if sporulation is occurring on the leaf surface. When sporulation occurs, then follow the method 1. 
that is with the help of sterile inoculation needle touch the spores and streak on the medium in a petri dish or slant or you can take one sterile needle stab into a growth medium so that some medium gets attached to the inoculation needle then you use that media covered inoculation needle to touch the spores then spores can be dislodged easily from the spore bearing structures then you make the streaking on the petri dish or slant method 3 this will be discussed in detail this is isolation method from tissue so for that choose a leaf showing prominent symptoms cut leaf beads of say 2 mm by 2 mm square size taking both the lesion area and the healthy tissue on the leaf then surface sterilize the leaf beads using sodium hypochlorite wash the leaf beads using sterile water with 2 to 3 changes so that traces of sodium hypochlorite is removed in washing otherwise sodium hypochlorite is toxic to microorganism and it will not allow the growth of our pathogen of interest transfer the leaf beads which are surface sterilized aseptically after drying to tap water agar or nutrient medium in petri plate here tap water agar is better than nutrient medium when tap water agar is used then the fungus which is there inside the leaf tissue will get the nutrients from the leaf tissue and grow on the medium however if nutrient medium is used then any other microorganisms present in the leaf tissue will also grow in the nutrient medium and will make a problem of contamination then after aseptic transfer of the leaf beads to petri dishes incubate the plates at 25 degree plus minus 2 degree celsius for a few days the fungal pathogen grows out of the leaf bead tissue and once the fungal growth appears transfer the fungal mycelium to a fresh nutrient medium in petri dish or slant so the procedure will be discussed here step by step choose a leaf showing typical symptom so say this is our leaf ordinary blight affected mustard leaf then cut leaf beads from the margins of the edges of the lesion so that we take square size of beads with some area of the lesion and also some area on the healthy tissue so that we get the age of the lesion because here your pathogen is advancing from the lesion radially to all other sites and your pathogen will be most active here growing in this region of the leaf tissue most active growth of the pathogen will be found in this area so this area must be taken we should not take leaf beads only with the lesion or with only healthy part of the leaf then surface sterilize the leaf beads dip the leaf beads in sodium hypochlorite solution for 2 minutes then wash the lip beads with sterile water with 2 to 3 changes of sterile water then dry up the beads with sterile blotting paper then transfer the lip beads to petri plate you can transfer one lip bead at the center of a plate aseptically the plate containing nutrient medium or tap water agar or you can transfer 2, 3 or 4 number of lip beads at equidistant places then incubate the plates at 25 plus minus 2 degrees celsius for a few days with regular observation so fungal pathogen grows out on the tissue you can find a fungal mycelia radiating from the leaf tissue and as it is shown by arrow mark you will find the growth of the fungus radiating from the leaf tissue it may be from one side or it may be 
in all directions. Then take only the mycelial tips, mycelial tips and transfer aseptically to petri dish or slant with the help of inoculation needle. Now incubate the petri plate or slant at 25 plus minus 2 degrees Celsius for 5 to 7 days and your culture is now established. Now to be sure that the isolated fungus is the pathogen of the disease you started with, Cox postulates have to be proved. Now you got a pure culture of the fungus you desire to isolate. This is all about isolation of fungus from disease leaf. If you have any query related to this post, you can write to me in the comment box. Thank you very much.